Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Welcome back to another episode of r slash Entitled People, where people apparently think they can do no wrong and that they should always, always get what they want. Guys, before we get into the stories today, I gotta show you guys this entitled woman right here. So she digs around and finds a ring that her boyfriend was going to use to propose with. And she says, Ew, self-shame Friday, here I come. Found this in the boyfriend's nightstand. Not a fan. Please roast and then tell me how to tactfully say no. You need to go get something different. Oh my goodness gracious. Not only is that super entitled, but the fact that she's getting random people to roast that ring online and asking for advice on how to say no to that ring? Damn it, lady! You don't even deserve a ring pop from those 25 cent dispensers! My friends, in this episode, you're gonna hear some pretty entitled stories. The first story, OP has a friend who treats her as an ATM machine and thinks she's entitled to OP's money anytime she needs it. Who knows somebody like that? The second story, and oh boy, the second story. Guys, a whole family thinks it's funny to pick on OP's daughter at a park. And we'll finish off with a short story about OP's child-free wedding. My friends, I do hope you stay for the stories today and hit that subscribe button for future Entitled People stories. Let's dive in. So, I allowed a friend of a friend who was down on her luck to room with me for two years, and we became good friends. In hindsight, the fact that her boyfriend at the time would not spring for a place for her to move in with him should have been a red flag for me. Fast forward a couple of years, and stuff happened. I lost my job, had to move back home across the country, and then I got a new job. I still kept in contact with her, and since I could afford it, I still sent her $100 every couple of months to help her out. She was still down on her luck, and it wasn't hurting my finances. She was also back living with her mom, and on government assistance for a while, so it was infrequent enough that it didn't bother me. But after a while, I was getting tired of her begging me to borrow some cash. I realized I never did tally the total amount, and I was shocked to find that it was well over $12,000 in the span of 8 years. So, I basically gave her an ultimatum last year. I told her, I'm cutting you off at the end of the year, and you have one year to get your act together. If you do, great, you don't need to rely on me anymore. If you still need help, then I'd be better off throwing money away into a black hole. I thought I was just helping you get back on your feet, not letting you live off me. Whatever the case, come January 1st, I'm not responding to any requests for money. Period. Things were cool for the first half of the year, but then the latter half is when things went south. First, it was more frequent requests for money. At first, requesting $500 in the span of two weeks in small chunks of $40 here, $80 there, and then it got worse. One time, instead of asking first, she'd just send a money request from her bank, as if I was an ATM and would blindly send it along. Also, if I didn't respond right away, she'd spam my phone, even though she knows I'd be busy working, in meetings, or commuting. Cue the phrase we've all seen in the sub for a lot of entitled people. Failure to plan on your part does not constitute an emergency on mine. Then the parent parts. There were incidents like asking me to pay for her child's medication because his dad forgot to pack it for his visitation. I said to her, why should I be paying for this? Not my kid. Shouldn't you be asking his dad? There was another instance where she asked for $80 for a bus ticket for her son to visit. Then the real kicker. This past Christmas, she had saved up enough money to buy a Nintendo Switch. A Nintendo Switch. Not, you know, saved up the money to handle surprise expenses or to pay me back. But she immediately spent the saved money on a very expensive gift for herself, saying that her son would also benefit from it on Christmas Day. A few weeks after she bought it, she contacted me saying that her boyfriend, boyfriend number 8, had broken into her apartment, stole a bunch of stuff like the Nintendo Switch, and pawned it. Thankfully, the police were able to get him, and I believe he's in jail now. However, she's still out of present, and her son will have nothing to open on Christmas. But instead of getting a cheaper present, or asking friends and family to pitch in, she comes to me first, and asked for $200 to go towards the new Nintendo Switch. Obviously, I declined. 
So here's another kicker. She used the line, I can't believe my friend ruined my Christmas. I told my son he was going to get a Nintendo Switch this year, which really pissed me off. Her ex ruined it by breaking into her apartment and stealing the gift, not me. I don't really owe her anything. She's not entitled to my money, and I'm not an ATM at her beck and call. So far in 2020, she still tried to borrow money, but I've held true to not giving her anything. And I'm also never having roommates again, especially people with kids. OP needs to change her phone number and cut all contact. Her friend really seems like a parasite that had finally found a host to latch onto, and she did it for 8 years and totally took advantage of OP's generosity and kindness. I feel like some people are gonna say that OP was also to blame for feeding her habit, and I agree with you guys. What's that saying? You give someone an inch, and they take a mile. In this case, the mile was to the tune of $12,000. That's a lot of Nintendo Switches. Okay, so for some background, I'm a father of a 9 year old girl who's my whole world. Her mother and I had split up 3 months after her birth when I found out that she had been cheating and naturally I got a DNA test and thankfully she was mine. Problem is, her mother does not care about her health. She feeds her whatever she wants and gives her coffee and donuts for breakfast sometimes. It's a mess. I've called CPS and the police in the past for wellness checks but it's gotten nowhere. So, since she was about 4, she's had a weight issue. On to today's story that happened about an hour ago. So, my daughter's well aware that she's overweight. She's teased constantly at school, so I've made it a habit to visit her at least 3 times a week each week for lunch, as she always asked me to come so she could eat in peace from the kids picking on her. This weekend was her weekend with me, and she's taken a liking to basketball, which I think is great and she asked me this morning to go to the park down the road to shoot some baskets with her. Of course I say yes, and we go. When we get there, I park, and immediately notice two kids sitting at one of the park tables, cussing and throwing a basketball back and forth at each other. I pay them no mind, and we walk up to the court that isn't being used. I also notice two adults, who end up being their parents, about mid-thirties sitting on a park bench about 30 feet away, smoking and messing around on their phones. We start shooting hoops, and she's having fun when I hear it. Kid number one says, Get off the court, fatty. We were about to use it, and you're too fat to play anyways. Look at you, you can't even make a shot. Kid two chimes in and says, Yeah, maybe go home and use a treadmill. And they both start laughing. Now, they said this with me right in front of them, and I'm pissed. I'm a big guy. About 6 foot 1, 190 pounds, and unlike others, I don't like confrontation, but I'm not scared to engage if necessary. I said, Okay, first off, both of you kids watch your damn mouths, and do not insult my daughter again. You really think that's okay? Insulting someone on something so sensitive and think it's a laughing matter? Your parents should be ashamed of themselves for raising you wrong. And that's when the parents hear me and join in on the fun, for them at least. The mother says, Who the hell do you think you are yelling at my sweet boys? Dad says, Yeah, you better watch what you say, dude. I told them, Your precious boys are standing here insulting my daughter and calling her fat. You two really think that's okay? To insult a child younger than them over something she's already bullied about at school? We're here trying to get some exercise in and play some basketball and just to have fun. I don't need to deal with you and your little punk kids insulting her. The entitled mom looks at me without blinking, like what I just said was the specials at a restaurant, and she says, So, what's wrong with what they said? Look at her. She's fat, isn't she? They're being honest. Then they all start laughing, literally two teens and two adults laughing at my little girl while she's standing behind me trying so hard not to cry, and I lost it. I said, Alright, listen, you two pointing at the parents, are trash parents. So they're being honest, and that's okay? Alright, fine. Here's some honesty. Your sons are bullies, and I promise you, eventually another kid will stand up for themselves and knock their teeth out. You both are absolutely horrible parents, thinking what your kids are doing is acceptable. Dad chimes in and says, Watch what you say to my wife and sons. Your daughter is fat. Deal with it. I was raging at this point and said, 
Watch what I say, or, or what, bud? What are you gonna do? You and your little perfect family seem to think honesty is alright, no matter what form, so I'm telling you, you're all just bullies. And unlike my daughter, I'm an adult and won't put up with any more of your crap. Especially if any of you say another word to my daughter, I swear you'll regret it. Looking back, maybe I shouldn't have said you'll regret it, but I was pissed and in protection mode. I continued and said, we're not leaving. My daughter just wanted a fun day at the park, and I will not tolerate another negative word said against her. Test me if you want. The dad and mom look at each other before finally the mom scoffs. Let's go, we're going home. They begin walking away down the street towards their house, and I'm watching them most of the way because I had a feeling they'd say something else. And I was right, sadly. When they're about 100 feet or so down the street, the dad yells, Have fun with your fat daughter, punk! I was about to say something back until my daughter said, Daddy, just let them leave. Now we can play alone. She's smiling now and I can tell she's alright and she just wants to have all this be over with. She tells me she's sick of people picking on her and that she's glad I stuck up for her because nobody at school does. I told her, always hun and I know, don't worry, let's just have fun. I'll always be there to help you when I can and I give her a hug. We had a good time for the next hour shooting hoops and then went home. Thanks for reading, guys, and don't put up with bullying. This actually breaks my heart so, so much. That parents out there would let their kids say mean things to a nine-year-old girl and then, and then join in. OP definitely took the high road on this one, because I know for a fact there's so many people out there that would have happily, happily gotten into a cop car after teaching those stupid parents a lesson. Absolutely disgusting. My fiancé and I are going to get married in a few months, and we've decided we don't want kids at the wedding. Kids are loud, they run around, they break things, and we don't want to have to deal with that on a day that we're supposed to celebrate our relationship. We've assigned the roles that are usually performed by children to our beloved pets. My dog will be the flower girl, my fiancé's dog will be the ring bearer, and my two cats are co-maids of honor. Our friends, boyfriend's sister, my brothers think it's adorable. Our other relatives do not share this enthusiasm. Boyfriend's parents said they thought it was strange and were hoping that his cousin would be the ring bearer, but they've accepted it because they want us to be happy. My parents threw a fit and accused me of placing animals above children. I calmly explained to them that this was my fiancé and my wedding and it wasn't really their plan to decide who would be a part of it. Our pets are well trained and well behaved, which is more than I can say about our relatives' kids. My parents have decided to boycott my wedding because I refuse to follow a certain sexist wedding tradition, which is the father giving away the daughter. My dad told me, since I was robbing him of his moment, that there was no reason for him to be there. Good riddance. One of the friends I've known since childhood is a mother of three and was going to be one of the bridesmaids. She was horrified when she learned that my dog and cats will be in the wedding party. Surely her three ill-mannered kids should have had that honor. She threatened to not come to the wedding. I made it easier for her by taking her name off the guest list. My cousin who has two kids told me, rather smugly, that she would bring her kids anyway. She told me that when she and her family were actually there, surely I won't be able to do anything about it. I told her that I would have her, her husband, and their kids escorted out by security. And that shut her up. My fiancé's friend asked him to make me replace my dog with his daughter as the flower girl. He was warned to never bring that up again. This wedding day will be a special day for my fiancé and I, and we will not let other people's entitlement ruin it. Here's something the parents need to know. Kids hate going to weddings. <laughs> I remember when I was little and my parents used to drag me to weddings, and me and my brothers hated it. It was always a boring few hours sitting at a table and not being able to run around and play, so we did not find it fun at all. And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash and title people. Guys, we made it. If you guys enjoy the stories, do hit that thumbs up. And if you missed the last episode of our slash and title people, a Karen pretends to be the owner's daughter to get what she wants. And it backfires so, so hard on her. Guys, check it out if you haven't. And I'll see you guys in the next one. And I love you.